five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Gonzaga. I asked you earlier, and you confirmed. God is purple. God is indeed purple. Well, if I if I if Pat Hanley was sitting here like he should be, right now, <laughs> if I asked him, all right, is do you? What is this thing with God being purple? Do you agree? What would he say? Absolutely not. <laughs> what is it? Navy blue? Yeah, I don't blue, know. Blue and gray? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> How did they get to like? I mean. It's a cool line, you it know, is. Um, but it's obviously it's obviously tongue in cheek and it's a joke, right? Yeah. But I don't know who came up with like, "Hey, God is going to be purple," because it's kind of blasphemous saying that God's any color. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not totally uh, ripping on the Eagles, but I'm just saying. <laughs> it's but um, uh, that aside, it's a it's a it's a fun. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, 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 the prep kids, I'm like, God, I wish we thought of that first. Imagine if they taught that in our religion classes and god was purple you had to go through sections about <laughs> uh, gonzaga religion classes yes that'd be funny that'd be really funny um and then the end like uh remember that week uh, that month we spent about how god's purple yeah <laughs> that's just for fun <laughs> and you love gonzaga now don't you <laughs> yeah <laughs> the indoctrination now uh anyway welcome marshall uh, it's a Pillars of Community. Yeah, thank you for having me. You got it, man. We're supposed to have Hanley here, but he's too much of a Don Juan, I guess. Yeah, he's whipped. He's got whipped. a new girlfriend. Oh, boy. What the heck is he doing in Annapolis? That's, he doesn't live in Annapolis. No, right? he doesn't. He lives... He probably he's lives. got a girlfriend who lives in Annapolis. Um, I think... I, I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. I think she lives closer to him, but I think she has a house in Annapolis as well. Got it. Got it. So, I mean, I guess they're... What is today? Wednesday? Today, yeah, Wednesday. What, does he not go to school? I think they're out. Oh, that's right. Yeah. For a minute, I thought that he was God is Purple guy, like you. No. Uh, no, they, they're graduating this weekend. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I still got another week. So earn, some, earn some time <laughs> on the water, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You guys are buddies. We are. Yeah. 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 We uh, stayed in touch throughout mm-hmm. high school, which yeah. is, yeah. Which is, cool. which is typical or not so typical? Um, the Gonzaga prep thing. I'd say it's for our grade. It kind of depends on the grade, but yeah. our grade, we never really disliked each other. Right. I mean, all of us went to school together at one point, pretty much. Um, the modern day, the modern day connection is strong. Oh, yeah, it's crazy. It's like there was probably twelve guys who went to Gonzaga who I hung out with, and then the thirty guys who went to prep, they all hung out together, and mm-hmm. we still we still hung out. Um, you know, on the weekends. Well, that that right that right there can be like a, a unifier. Yeah. For the rest of your non modern day classmates, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Which is great, you know. No, it's super cool. I Pat Pat and give Michael and Enrique a shout out. Those were my boys at uh modern day and oh, God. <laughs> Enrique uh King Kaiko. King Kaiko. Yep. He's such a gem. Oh, he's awesome. I need we need him on the podcast. <laughs> Come on, come on, Rike. Yeah. You got to be listening to this thing. <laughs> and his older brother, Donde. Yeah, he's a, a cool dude. Yeah, genius. Yeah. Smart, smart cat. Yep. And you said Enrique and who else? Michael? Murphy. Oh, yeah, Murph. Yep. There's another Eminem for you, huh? Yep. Eminem gem. Yes, sir. Oh, man. Um, you went to Modern Day what? One year? Did you come in? No, you came in sixth grade? I came in sixth grade. Sixth grade. Yeah. How, how was that transition? Or how was that? Did you like it? Oh, I loved it. It was the best three years of my life, probably. Um, I Seriously, I loved it so much. Um, it was so different from what I was used to. Because mm-hmm. I went to I went to a public school before that. Mm-hmm. And as soon as I got to modern day, it's just completely different, you mm-hmm. know. They don't baby you. They kind of let you figure things out on your own. Right. And they can be kind of a hard ass to you, too. So, uh I enjoyed that because I, I like being pushed and told when I'm doing something wrong, and I think yeah. it made me better, so I really enjoyed it. I think you're right. Um, <clears throat> certainly for certain people, like, thrive off that discipline yeah. idea. Kevin Giblin, who was there and taught me and taught with me for a while, he uh, used to say, boys, cr- 
crave discipline. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's like, I, 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 sometimes people, teachers leave the room, you know, you have to every so often. Um, and certain kids, like, get uncomfortable. Yeah. So I, certain kids, like, you got a class clown or two, and they're, like, you know, firing spitballs or, yeah. or, or snagging people's book bags and throwing them out the window or something. <laughs> but uh, some people are just like, I, I want the discipline back. You know, it's kind of counterintuitive. Yeah, there's always, you got the kids who are running around, you know, messing around, and then you got the kids who just kind of sit there and wait for the for the teacher to come back. Two different kinds of people. Yeah, that's when I used to, I had to leave the classroom. I would leave, and I'd like hang outside <laughs> and like listen. <laughs> and throw my head back in there. Oh, yeah. I'm still here. <laughs> you guys better be good. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it was fun. I mean, that's that's one of the reasons why I ended up back in Monterey for like 15 years. Like, I, I went there from second to eighth grade. Yep. Um, I was at St. Bartholomew School, and it, it was like I needed a little more active environment. Yeah. My mom and dad put me over there, and I saw the teachers en- enjoying what they're doing like so much. Yeah. And I, lo- I looked up to all of them as a, a solid role models. During like the most important years, or like your, you're like your puberty year, basically, you know, it's like yeah. fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth grade. You're just like growing and th- changing, and you need direction. Yeah, there's so many kids who I went to school with when I was uh, before I came to Modern Day, and I see them now, and I'm like, Ooh, what? There's <laughs> <laughs> what, what happened there? <laughs> but I think I honestly, because a lot of those kids I hung out with. So, yeah. um, in your public school, yeah. So a lot of those were my friends then, and I think if I hadn't gone to Modern Day, I may have, you know, ended up not, not the way I am. You like you like the way you are now. As, I do, as you should. Yeah, a nice young man, and you're going to Wake Forest to get an education. Yeah, and to play some golf on the side, <laughs> <laughs> something like that. Yeah, Wake Forest, big time golf. We're talking earlier, um, and. Uh, <laughs> we talked again earlier about how you're a big time lacrosse too. I was, and I know I know big time lacrosse, and I remember coaching you watching eighth grade. I'm like, this guy's he's got it, but it's not the age of Deion Sanders anymore or Bo Jackson, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you know those names? I do know those. Yeah, names, yeah, yeah, yeah. Two two sport professionals. It's hard now. I guess it's hard now. Yeah, it's it's hard to play two sports. Yeah, um, and go to. Wake Forest or go to the top of the food chain for any given sport. Yeah. You know, it's, and you chose golf. I did. I did. How come? Um, I played lacrosse my whole life and, uh, I played really seriously from the time I was in probably fourth grade up until eighth grade. Um, You start, you played golf, uh, lacrosse before golf. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I played, I, I didn't play golf seriously until, um, I'd say seventh grade, spring of seventh grade. Mm-hmm. And then, but I played lacrosse super seriously my entire life. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I just got burnt out from it mm-hmm. and, you know, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the games. I enjoyed playing. I enjoyed, you know, being with my team, but mm-hmm. it was just a lot. Um, mm-hmm. and not enjoying something and having to do it all the time makes you hate it even more. <laughs> uh, so I think I was initially just going to take a break and maybe go back and play again in uh, freshman year of high school. Yeah. But um, going into freshman year of high school, I had a really good summer in golf. And once that happened, I, I started getting attention from colleges and then, after that, I just completely focused on on golf. Yeah. And we were talking earlier about tough decisions, you know. And uh, the hardest decisions are those that, uh, uh, some of the hardest decisions, I say, are those that um, involve, like, a lot of people have, have strong opinions. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, all right, I, I listen to this person. I, I trust these people. You know, these people forever. You know, these are my coaches and teachers and stuff like that. Um, to be able to take all that and all that their, their opinions and sometimes helpful uh, but other times like distracting noise 
and to block it out and listen to your your own voice. Yeah, I. Uh, it's a life. It's a lifetime struggle. That's a lifetime deal that it, uh, you learned at an early age. Yeah, it's hard to not listen to other people, especially when it's a big decision like that, because yeah. that decision had repercussions that would have gone down all the way to college. Yeah. And I was making that in eighth grade. So yeah. um, I just followed what I wanted to do. Yeah. It probably wasn't the smartest decision at the time, but uh, it ended up working out and I'm super happy. You know what I mean? Like not the smartest, like being that it was like a gamble. It was a gamble because yeah. I was, I was much better at lacrosse at the time than I was at golf. Right. And uh, I was pretty confident that, if I kept working hard at lacrosse, I could yeah. probably go play a pretty good mm-hmm. college. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, that was a bit of a gamble, but super happy that I took it, and uh, it worked out. Yeah, sometimes, like, it's the line, it's the, I think the line from a song, the heart knows what the head doesn't, or the heart can, or something like that. It's like, the, the safe bet would be to stick with lacrosse. Yeah. But like I don't know, something speaking inside. It's that mysterious voice that always is saying something that you really got to listen to. Um, that's what I was talking about. It's like sort of lifelong listening fest, yeah. <laughs> a li- lifelong relationship you have. Your mind has with your heart. Yep. And to try to keep those in tune. Yeah, and I, you can't make sense of this stuff sometimes. Yeah, I think I have, I also have just a super addictive personality where once mm-hmm. I start to fall in love with something Mm -hmm. then i just i go for it 100 Mm percent and i noticed that it it was like that with lacrosse um you know back in like fifth and sixth grade where i I would be out in my backyard throwing against uh yeah bounce back and then shooting all the time and then as seventh and eighth grade rolled around i noticed i would just you know i would either be at the golf course or um you know at my house not doing anything mm-hmm. and I'd stopped practicing when I didn't have to practice and stop practicing golf uh, lacrosse, lacrosse. Yeah. yeah and I noticed that I think that was just like a what I, was the I lost the spark what do you think it was uh, you said you said when uh, eighth, eighth grade or so I stopped playing club lacrosse in seventh grade okay. and then I played I played for modern day in eighth grade something happened when did you start playing uh, a lot of golf. Um, when did you start getting the kind of that you said like obsessed about it? Obsessed, I would say. Late summer of sixth grade. Going into seventh. Yes. Yeah. And I, and I was, just was it a did you get a home one or something? No, I th- <laughs> I think I shot like a seventy four or something. This is a great number. <laughs> and I was just like, holy cow! Where did you shoot that at? Uh, at Chevy Chase. Cool. Yeah, and it was. I was like blown away. I was like, "Holy crap! This is—it's so fun, you know." There's and it was like a a whole new great feeling, of, you know, it's it's a completely different feeling than scoring a goal. It's like this was—it's so much more like I, I put in all the work and it's all paying off. Yeah, and it's all on you whether or not you play or succeed. Mm -hmm. And I kind of like that pressure. Yeah, yeah, that's wonderful. Um, There's a lot of so that was like sort of your aha moment. Yeah. Maybe you shot at 70, which was your personal best at, at the, the time. time. Yep. At the time. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. listeners. Um, and you're like, and then your sort of personality that you talked about, it's like, I want more of that. Yes. Right? Yeah. And then I just started going out, practicing every day. I mean, I'd be out there for, I'd be out there at like nine. I'd come home at like six. Mm-hmm. And it was just like 12 hours. It was just, I just enjoyed it so much. Mm-hmm. And I had a good, I'd have, a good group of friends to play with and mm-hmm. you know i it just it wasn't all which is nice and i think that mm-hmm. was when i struggled with not getting burnt out with lacrosse because it was serious all the, yeah um and golf i could i could mess around when i wanted to but yeah i could also turn the switch when i wanted to get serious and get something done it's good perspective like you can call up some friends and be like let's go play a fun game yeah exactly i need to, uh, I need to call up like like t- twelve guys, in order to get to bring all your equipment, you gotta bring the balls. Yep. I'm talking about lacrosse now, and you gotta bring the uh, sticks and the pads and everything. And now, what are you gonna do? Play like three on three? Yeah, you know. Yeah, it's it's different. It's yeah, it's definitely much easier to get things put together. Yeah. Um. You could, like, yeah. 
I was gonna say you chip in the backyard, but you could also like a stick with a crossbow. <laughs> My point is moot. Yeah. You know that term? Moot. I don't. I for, I was talking to my mom, small side. I was talking to her yesterday, and, it's, and we talked about something like, a, well, this is here, and this is there, so they cancel each other out. So that point is moot, M-O-O-T. Never heard that. Um, I always thought it was mute. I think that's someone who can't speak. I know that. Oh, no, okay. but, but that would be, that would be I'm, I'm double-checking myself right now. Okay. But that would be a, a, a point... Uh, You'd say, yeah, I would say this, maybe. I'm like, all right, that cabinet over there <laughs> is made of oak. Okay. And then, you know, I don't know, you'd see something on it that says, uh, like, made of oak. I'm like, all right, that thing you just said, you don't really need to say it. That point is pretty moot. Yeah. M, M O O T. Huh. I think that this is, hold on. M O O T. Moot point, yeah. Oh, okay. Issue that is so uh, is subject to or open for discussion debate, which no satisfactory answer is found. Okay, usually one to be definitively determined by some, right. something like that. But it's not <laughs> it's not mute. Like a point would uh, I mean you could say that we can't speak or something that doesn't speak. It, it sounds like it could be right, you know. Yeah, and I, I miss I. Um, have, uh, hold on. All right, we're good. Um, a lot of times in conversation and in, 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 in writing, I would say, M-U-T-E. This conversation is beginning a little bit moot. So we're going to change the subject back to golf. All right, <laughs> let's do it. Um, there's a really cool honesty, I think, about the sport. I don't think, I don't think we're recording. We're going to take, take five, take two. Okay. <laughs> I like sushi. <laughs> and we're back. All right. All right. Sushi's a healthy dish. It is. Yeah. yeah. And it gets like, it's almost like Chinese food light. Even though I know sushi's Japanese, everybody. But uh, <laughs> I love Chinese food. I love China. I love yeah. Asian food in general. Yeah, so do I. The, the, the soy sauce, yep. the salt probably, um, teriyaki, all those teriyaki sauces. Yep. I love rice. I, love, I, uh, I eat rice with almost everything. Gosh, I haven't had any dinner. I'm, we're, we're <laughs> no, I'm cut hungry. this thing short. <laughs> uh, but I, if I'm like in the mood for uh, Chinese food, I would say, um, and I'm like, you want to not like overeat, which mm. happens all the time when I eat Chinese food. <laughs> That's same with me. Um, then you get sushi, and it's like you get the rice, and you get like a healthier. You don't get like deep fried chicken, like a, a general sow. Um, and it's like a, a raw fish, but then you get to put like soy sauce all over it. Yeah, it's a process. So you, it takes yeah. longer to eat. It may not be as much food, but it takes longer to eat. That's so good point. It it's like eating more. crabs. Yeah, it's exactly right. Oh man, I love crabs. <laughs> <laughs> eat crabs. It's like it's uh, self-imposed or it's imposed uh, by the uh, the dish. Basically, just takes time, and, and I think it's been proven or whatever. If you eat slowly, that's a good thing. Yeah, it gives yourself time to get full i think correct um yeah correct and then allow for your stomach to fill up uh gradually instead of like you know dumping everything down there and that's when you start eating too much exactly and if you have like three pieces of pizza i'm like i'm okay on three pieces of pizza but i still hungry <laughs> i'm still hungry <laughs> yeah. but you give yourself all right i'm gonna seven and a half minute break here and i'm like you know what? my hunger's gone yeah, it's crazy. Because the stomach is actually, <clears throat> it's got to catch up with how much you're putting in there. I did that today. I, uh, during lunch, I just, I started eating so many things so fast. <laughs> and I, I was like, I shouldn't eat all this. And, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm still hungry. So I went and I toasted two pieces of toast, threw some peanut butter on there. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, all right. And then poured myself like a bowl of goldfish. I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's, good, it's good going down, right? Yeah, it is like, good going down. I, I don't know if you got like a period after lunch, uh, but you, I'd, I'd be falling asleep. It's it's definitely difficult to stay awake, especially <laughs> yeah. at home. <laughs> is that where you were at home? Were you home today? I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you're home and you're comfortable and you're comfy clothes and everything. Oh, yeah. And you, you, the after lunch period, even a modern day, you don't even, I don't even like teaching it. Yeah. I'll have a, so it's a gourmet day, right? <laughs> and like, all right, we're definitely not starting this class on time, right? Oh, yeah. It's gonna, we're starting a little five minute late grace period. <laughs> and then you get in there and you're like, maybe have another chicken wing as the kids like hand up their homework. 
and <laughs> it just like everyone's just tired and full. Oh, it's so. It, and when you have days like that, you just go full out. You load yeah. up your plate nine times. You're like already ready to puke, and you're like, all right, I can get some more on the plate and scarf it down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mr. Geimer, remember his line? Take all you want, but, you know. I can't, I don't, I don't know. Take all you want, but eat all you take. Okay. Which is fair. Yeah, it is fair. I don't care how many you want to. That was also Mr. Williams' line. <laughs> uh, a similar line that he was famous for during D.C. week. He's like, all right, boys, when you're down there in D.C., you're not going to buy any food except at lunchtime. All right? <laughs> all right, guys? No horsing around down there. But at lunchtime, you can eat as much as you want. But if lunch is 40 minutes long, when that 40 minutes is done, that food better be gone. <laughs> He's like, you can get you can get all the juju bees you want. Which is like some random candy. <laughs> I don't know if they still make. I, they do. My mom got me them Juju-bees. for Christmas. They're Juju-bees. terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Hear that, Mr. Williams? Uh, <laughs> and it became a joke. I'm just like, he's doing, he's going to say Juju Bees again. He's going to say Juju Bees again. Um, and right, it's this DC Week speech. Um, but the point is, during lunch, you don't know, take all you want, but eat all you take. Yep. Simple. We used to petition after gourmet days to not have to run during sports. We'd be like, we're going to puke. We're all going to puke. Yeah. And would be like, yeah. all right, all right. And then they would like have us pick up all the balls and then like, and then they would yeah. put us to the end line and be like, yeah. all right, now you're running. Yeah. And you're like, oh, gosh. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, yeah, it's always like, they, you're in, they get gourmet day, they're in upper school, they think they're like really mature and old or something, and they're like somewhat, somewhat wise about yep. eating in the world or something. <laughs> and like, I have, I got a P, let's say we have PE, right? Yep. You got seventh grade PE or seventh gourmet day. <clears throat> like, Scared, we can't, we can't run. We can't run today. All right. so we got to go made it. You know, it's like, it's like so full. You know? and it's, like, <laughs> the, it's like fake sort of groans. <laughs> and they scratch their belly. It's like, oh, I just can't do it. You know, it's just like I'm just full of like too many cheeseburgers and Chick-fil-A's. And, uh, I'm like, you know, snap out of it. And we get to run. Ding dongs. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was a big line of mine maybe after you graduated. It was Mr. It was Mr. Danver there when you were there a little uh, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He taught you seventh grade maybe history. Yes. Yeah. So one of my best friends. We used to always run together, and we used to do PE together. And like first grade, second grade, seventh grade, whatever they were. So do we have to run today? I said, no, we don't. You get to run. So get on the get on the line. <laughs> I, def- I definitely and heard that. You're welcome. That. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I think. I don't know if this is true. This may be putting, or myself, maybe myself putting a memory mm-hmm. in my head. Mm-hmm. But did you ever make the kids thank you while they were running? Yes, you did. Yes. Okay, I thought I remembered. Yes, that. I thought that was hysterical. When we get back from this lap, you're going really hard. Be sure to thank me. <laughs> you want to thank you? You can even write me a thank you note. Send it to the school. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm making you better. Come on, <laughs> embrace, so embrace the hurt. <laughs> I think I think Mr. Kubik embraced the suck. Yep. But uh, good memories, huh? So many good memories. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did so many things that I didn't think I was gonna do there. That's so cool. I did. I wrestled eighth grade instead of playing hockey, which was Phew. which you, was weird and different. You used to be a hockey guy. I was. Yeah, I played hockey for like ten years. You did Chevy Chase, right? I did. Yep. Yeah. So. I I also had Mr. Danver as a coach in that. Yeah. He's yeah. hilarious. He's I, hilarious. I loved him. Totally. And him and Mr. Charles is just. A, you um, never know what you're gonna get. This is true. <laughs> talk about talk about the odd couple. Yeah, those two guys. You know uh, what I'm saying? Yeah, both good good coaches, but they're pretty different. Very. <laughs> I had Mr. Charles's brother as my coach at Chevy, and they are just, just polar opposites huh. at coaching. What's his name? Um, Do you know his first name? I don't. I yeah. I should. I, I, well, I don't know. I did it one time. Um, but yeah, Mr. Charles, big hockey guy. He played. He played uh, across the street. He played. He played Chevy Chase. He might still play, for all I know. He's a nut, but yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if he's still playing. I wouldn't either. Yeah, he yeah. would talk about athlete, man. You know that about Mr. Charles? I didn't know he was that good of an athlete. Oof. Like the athletic ability. Like he went and played one year in college, like set, like records for lacrosse and everything. He's like, I'm not doing this anymore. 
um, like a really good golfer. Oh wow! Used to be. I don't know how much he golf's anymore, but like used to like just for, like athletic ability, and you can tell athletes almost by how they walk. Yeah. You start running. You throw them a ball, and they're like, they're like this guy's this guy's got it. You know, the yeah. eye hand coordination and stuff, and he surfs a lot. And he's yeah. really good at that. Um, but he was a big golfer, man. He got into golf. But anyway. Talk to me about golf. What's your what's your best iron? What's your best club in the bag? Probably my not drive. not the foot wedge. No, not the. Don't foot have wedge. that. I took that out. <laughs> I ain't got room for that thing. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. Always <laughs> room. <laughs> There's always room for the foot wedge. Oh, you make room. Yep. Uh, I'd say my driver. I hit it pretty straight off the tee. Um, it's pretty. Great. It starts with that. Yeah. yeah. I just gotta. Once I get on the green, it's uh. I gotta get better at that. Plastic. Yeah, a lot of it's so much of golf is psychological and mental, and it's such it, like it should be the easiest part of the game. You'd think like yeah. you'd think hitting a little ball from like 300 yards away onto you know a, a 30 foot wide, 30 foot deep green with yeah. a tiny hole yeah. would be the hardest part. But it's like the five foot putt is right. by far because you're just going on in your brain. It's all just yeah. You gotta try and block that stuff out and. I've been trying to get better at that, but um, it's definitely hard. It's like how many five foot putts have you missed? Maybe less than you've made, but let's just but but that we, I think it's human nature to focus on the failures instead of the successes. I agree. Which is, I don't know if that's human, truly human nature, like the human condition, or just competitive people. Maybe I, I don't know. know. Yeah. But, um, but lo- that's that's the that's the rule of thumb. It seems to me. I would agree. Yeah. I uh, I got a good piece of advice from one of my old coaches. Mm-hmm. And it was about, you know, being mentally more on like a, a plateau and uh, not getting too high or too low. Yeah. And, you know, today I played. I didn't have a great day. Yesterday I played well. So it's it's – when that kind of stuff happens, not getting too happy about yesterday and not getting too, too sad about Bummed today out. and yeah. too set back. Cause I mean, like if you put in the work, it's not just going to go away in one day. Like one bad day doesn't mean that you're bad. Mm-hmm. If you have like a bad year and one, and one good, right and one good day doesn't mean that you're good. Exactly. You know, so you can't just don't get too ahead of yourself. I think that's the biggest lesson that I've learned. I think a huge life lesson is con- is consistency. Um, to pr- try to be as consistent as you can with healthy habits and with um, hobbies and pursuits and professions that you engage in. <laughs> and um, go- golf is like up there for that consistency. Yeah, it's it's so. I mean, I could pick up a lacrosse stick and throw pretty proficiently in it without practicing for a year. Yeah. But uh, hitting a golf ball for 18 holes, it's a whole other story. <laughs> it's, it, it's crazy. I mean, you'd think, crazy. Like, you'd think that how much time I put in and even the best pros in the world put in. Yeah. Those guys put in so many hours and they're yeah. the best at it in the world. And they still haven't figured out a way to like hit the same shot every single time. Yeah. And it's, it's the guys who can hit the same shot the most and... Mm-hmm. Their misses be as close or in in good spots. Mm-hmm. Those are the guys who do the best. So. Smart. I mean, it's a uh, it's a beautiful game. It's a hard. As you said, who's the guy who said the hardest course is the six inches between your ears? Yeah, I, I I'm sure it's something like big time. Something yeah, like that. No, I'm sure it was. Yeah, I should it's, know. Uh, it's <laughs> oh, you gotta like think. You almost gotta like think small. Yeah, and I think sometimes that's why. Maybe that's why you, in sixth grade, are going to seventh shot of seventy four. Yeah, like a small, a quiet mind's a good mind for golf. I I think so much more than I did back then. I know, and it's because I've learned so much. I know. Sometimes ignorance is bliss. Ignorance is bliss. Yeah, especially in golf, because when you have so many things going through your head. Yeah you don't know what's right and what's wrong. But when you're just kind of going out there and playing naturally and being athletic about it, yeah, 
then those are some those are usually the days you play your best. Yeah. Yeah. It's like uh I play very recreationally. <laughs> and um if I haven't played in let's say a couple months and I uh I go out and play, like I have no expectations. Yeah. And I play probably okay. Yeah. You know? So I've been, I, 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 I got this. Come out the next day later, and I don't got this. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's the difference. There's so many, so many of my friends I play with. They're great when I just play casually with them, uh-huh. and they'll sign up for a tournament. And it's just like I don't know how they shoot these numbers, because it, it's as soon as there's some sort of pressure or some sort of meaning to yeah. their golf shots, then they just start overthinking. And I think I was lucky enough to, I think play so many other sports where I learned to not overthink as much. Yeah. It's interesting that like you started playing lacrosse way young, right? Yeah. What grade do you think? Um I'd say third grade. Yeah. Well um, I was just at a kindergarten? Wow. First grade? It's gotta be first. No, it's kindergarten. Jeez. I mean I, I think I played with like those I was at a K K slash one practice just now. That's crazy. It's nuts. Yeah, I played with the uh, those next level sticks where they're like plastic heads, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're not even like mesh. Mm-hmm. And you, I, I remember starting off with those, mm-hmm. and then uh, mm-hmm. man, I don't really not fiddle really, fiddle sticks. No, those aren't fiddle sticks. I don't even know what they call these. Yeah, but yeah, they had like the little bar over. Oh the, yeah, yeah, those are like back. modern day stuff. Yeah, those are like yeah. the ones that you play with. Yeah, in yeah, the yeah. Gym yeah, yeah. We have a whole like trash can full of those. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Let's go play across for PE. And it's like, okay, that's just gonna go. <laughs> Plays the girls across, I guess. That's how you got to do it. Yeah. But those things are a trip. They have they have the bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could just like pinch it up against the bar yeah. and be all cheap about like it. This and it's like, yeah, oh, can't yeah. catch me. <laughs> And like, and you got extreme like, uh, yeah. What's the opposite of whip? Like, it goes oh, straight up. I think sky like, whip or something yeah, like no that. Yeah, no whip. I don't no know. No whip. Yeah. Exactly. You gotta really, you gotta aim at your shoes in order to get the ball to go <laughs> yeah. to forward. It's uh, yeah, that's yeah. so funny. Yeah. I uh, I picked up my lacrosse stick earlier this fall. Yeah. Or I guess not this fall, but I mean last year. And I went out in the backyard. I was just pretty bored. I was like, all right, I'm just going to go out and shoot. Because I still had my lacrosse my lacrosse net and, like, yeah. the backstop in my backyard. So I went out and shot. And I started just – I shot. The first shot I took went, like, straight up <laughs> over the fence yeah. right into my neighbor's backyard. I was waiting for, like, a window to break. Yeah, yeah, I was like – Holding your oh, breath. I was holding my breath. <laughs> like, oh, God, please no. Yeah, yeah. And I was like – all right, that's enough. <laughs> and I went back inside. And I was like, "Well, <laughs> grab your putter." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and put in your your kickback on the inside carpet or something. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you use that stuff. Like, like, I, have, oh. I, have, I have a mat. In yeah, my those are fu- so fun. They are. Especially so you get you with your dad or a friend and do like a putting contest. It's yeah, like, it's easy. It's also it's good practice too. Not uh, bad. I mean, I have it. I have it in my room. My room. My room's not like huge. Yeah. So I have it like taken up like a third of the room, uh-huh. <laughs> and I just I'll, I'll, some nights I'll just it's like the golf's taking play. up a third of your life, probably, yeah, basically probably. Yeah, I'd say sleep is one half. Sleep, work, golf. Yeah, that's about it. And uh, yeah, I'll be up if I can't fall asleep and I'm really bored. Then I'll go out, I'll putt, mm-hmm. and uh, it's a little loud. And I'm pretty sure my dad can hear it from his room. <laughs> and he's probably asleep. He probably hates me for it, but he doesn't say anything. So because he loves you, yeah, and, and you're pursuing something you love. Yeah. So it's hard. I would think hard for parents to to get upset by such a healthy habit or desire. You yeah. Know? He. You, uh, your dad play? Yeah, he does. He he was the one who got me into golf. Yeah. Is yeah. your dad pretty good? He's okay. Yeah. Um, his back's been messed up for the last. I can't even count how many years, but yeah. he uh, he hasn't been able to play as much. But I think when he was healthy, he got down to like a six at one That's point, great. which is. Pretty darn good. Really, that's good golf. Really good golf. Yeah, he he didn't play until after college either, and I think he just. Did Dad play there. sport in college? He played football. Yeah, it seemed like a, certainly an athlete. Yeah, he he got, was. The, he got the look, the build, the walk. Of an athlete. Yeah, he's got the walk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He uh, that's he was a wide receiver at Elon. Yeah. And I always, when I was younger, I would always play catch with him in the front yard. And whenever he dropped a pass, I always make fun of him. I'm like, "Weren't you? You played college football? What are you doing?" <laughs> I want to see the yearbook. Yeah. I don't believe you. 
Um, yeah, Elon's a cool school. Yeah, um, it's gotten really big too. It's blown up. It is. Did you look at Duke at all? No. Um, they have really good golf, right? Yeah, they are good golf. Uh, good at golf. I uh, I think I, my dad brainwashed me to hate Duke from a young young age. <laughs> uh, I know you probably don't like that. No, I mean that's that's I don't know. It's I, common, I think. Yeah, it it's, it's so funny. My dad, I I'll I'll watch teams that I just like don't have any care about, and I'll mm-hmm. root against them automatically just because of what my dad has told mm-hmm. me to do mm-hmm. <laughs> when I was like nine mm-hmm. and ten. He'd be like, "Hey, Marsh, you know, you mm-hmm. see that team? We don't Marsh. like them." <laughs> Got that? It's gonna be a quiz. All right, circle the teams that you're supposed to not like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. It's like. Syracuse, which I find like kind of random. He's like, yeah, you, we don't root for Syracuse, Notre Dame, which didn't go over well at modern day because yeah. half the people there were like, MD, ND. Yeah, yeah, everyone there is huge Notre Dame. Fans. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it was, it's um, funny. Who's who is in the ACC? When's golf season? It's fall or spring? What's the uh, main one? The main one is in the spring, spring. but there is, there is a uh, fall tournaments for, yeah. for college. That's just for college. And then yeah. there is summer stuff is independent. So you have like amateur stuff for when you graduate high school, Yeah, um, which I'll start doing a lot of this year. And that's just no team. It's just all you. Um, but once you get to college, then it's, it's a much different experience. Right. What, uh, Who's winning the ACC this year? Is, is it over? Yeah, uh, I think Clemson won. Yeah, they've they've been playing really well. Wake hasn't been playing great lately. Which ACC stinks. like pretty strong golf conference. Very good. Yeah, yeah. we uh, I can't remember what we got, but it wasn't it wasn't great. But we just we just qualified for uh, national championship. So talking about Wake. Wake did. Okay, great. So we got in today, which was good. Into the national championship. Yeah, so there's regional qualifiers where they, they take like a bunch of teams and then six teams from each mm-hmm. uh, regional get sent to mm-hmm. the national championship. Mm-hmm. The national championship is how many schools? Um, I'd say probably 32. And is it like elimination style bracket? So there's a, it's actually really cool. Uh, the first three rounds are just stroke play, mm-hmm. and then they add up like the team scores, and then those top the top eight team scores then go into a match play bracket, and then the winner of the match play bracket wins the national championship. Interesting. Yeah. How long is that? How long does it last? Um, it's probably probably five days. Cool. I mean, which is uh. It's a lot shorter than March Madness. Yeah, yeah no, it's a lot more condensed. Yeah. It's so, it's amazing how tiring tournament golf is oh. compared to regular golf. It's just so much more of a mental strain. Mental strain will weigh you down, man. Yeah, especially if you're having a bad day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have Do you have caddies in college or no? No, um, you can have caddies in certain amateur tournaments. So during the summer, um, not NCAA. Really. No. Yeah, no, no caddies until you're really on tour. What about a Gonzaga? <laughs> I wish that would actually be you're really fun. You are the caddy. Yeah. We should do that. We should have a fun one. You know. I know. I for the uh, the Maryland Dam, we can have caddies. Um, so I'll take one of my friends out, and we'll just have a good time. For the Maryland Amateur. Yes. Are you, uh, are you playing in that? I am. It's a big time tournament. Uh, for the state, yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh. It's a it's a super fun tournament. It's one of my favorites every year. Um, is it you know, talking about Maryland Amateur for everyone or, or for juniors or? Uh, for everyone. For everyone. Um, and you bring one of your buddies to caddy. Yeah, I, I will. I'll, one of your buddies who knows golf. Yes. Who knows you. Yes. Usually you trust. Yeah. So there's. Uh, so you're not bringing Pat Ham. <laughs> no. no offense, Patrick. Sorry, Pat. Should be sitting right over there. Yep. Too busy canoodling in Annapolis. <laughs> over a bowl of. Spaghetti. Yep. And a lady in the tramp or something. Yeah, he's getting Tex Mex. Yeah. Like, that's I mean, a recipe for disaster. That sounds like it to me. It doesn't sound like a romantic uh, I, idea right there. I, I would agree. And there's <laughs> so there's so many good spots in Annapolis. Mm-hmm. Like you can get a mm-hmm. great crab cake. There's this one pizza place which is really good. Mm-hmm. And he chose Tex Mex. I mean, uh, you gotta realize who we're dealing with here. 
it's Patrick Hammond. Yes, exactly, exactly right. Yeah, yeah. not the brightest. <laughs> <laughs> He's got his talents. Everyone's got their talents, right? Yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> um, what were you saying about oh, the Maryland Am- Maryland Am? When is that? Summer? Uh, it's the tenth May, June tenth through thirteenth. Where is it played? Rolling Road. It's uh, it. I I haven't heard of it either. So uh, it's gonna be good though. It should be fun. Yeah. yeah. Um. Uh, it wasn't, well. it wasn't last year's at Sligo. It was like two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty much at Sligo track? last year. Fun, you ever play Sligo? I have. I have. Yeah. Uh, that's a fun. Yeah. I think that's I, where you go out with your buddies. Just let's go have some fun. Yeah. That is. And play with no shoes on. Exactly. Grab one club. Yeah. That sort of deal. Yep. We uh, do that there, at, like Rock Creek Park. Yeah. Yeah. DC. Yeah. That might be more down toward uh, Gonzaga. Yeah. That's right across the street from St. John's. Okay, great. Yeah, so uh, it was funny. I the first the only time I've really been golfing with some of my Gonzaga buddies who don't play golf much. We went there, and we played. You know, it was just like a, a fun little round. Yeah. And I was hanging out with the same kids two weeks later. Yeah. And they showed me an article. It was like dead body found on hole number ten pond at Rock Creek Park Golf <laughs> Course, and I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> That's crazy, dude. That's talk about like a, a hazard right there. Yeah, that's that's a hazard. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that would be quite the run in. Oh my goodness gracious! Just going out to play a nice round of golf and finding a dead body. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, no fun, no good. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to have had a round that bad. <laughs> Not to belittle the man's life, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But anyway, um, so I like um, how you talked maybe a little bit ago. About how um, maybe your competitive spirit was helped by playing a lot of like team sort of competitive sports growing up. I yeah I I think I I came to that realization last summer. Um, I noticed I kind of lost my competitive edge where right right after stopping playing. Uh, team sports mm-hmm. i would i used to like run people down or chase people down mm-hmm. on the leaderboard mm-hmm. and like do anything and like fight really hard just to do well um but i noticed sophomore year um i kind of lost that edge where i'd be complacent where i was and i've been really trying hard over the last year and a half to get that back and i think i have um, how'd, you, how'd you get it back I, or, number one is to uh, recognize it, realize it, pinpoint yep. it, you know, yep. that's, that's something's missing. Um, and then you got to figure out how to get it back. I think I just, I've taken it more seriously. I get myself into more of a serious mental state before I go out. Um, I try to, I like quietly hype myself up. Yeah. Uh, and just like, I, I, some, I'm like, I, there's times where I'll be like talking to myself down the fairway where I'm like mm-hmm. pumping myself up. I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to beat everyone here. Like all that. And then the uh, fine line between like getting, you know, pumped up and rah, rah. Yeah. And then you get up to the green. It's got, you got to like, totally be in the zone and, yep. and quiet. It's, I think, yeah, I think that's sort of what being in the zone is. It's like, it's right. like having like a quiet intensity in yeah. your head. Yeah. Um, and I think it's it's pretty easy to recognize in golf because yeah. you know you're not thinking about anything. You're confident. You know exactly what you're going to do. But it's super rare to get that. So I just try to – the last time I had it, I tried to really consciously think about what I was thinking at that moment and, like, what I'd done leading up to it so I could possibly replicate, replicate what I was doing before and how I was feeling and – uh in tournaments and rounds in the future and i think that's helped a lot i i definitely have noticed that i'm like more ready to go mm-hmm. and i'm not like more intense yeah more of a more, fiery competitor now yeah and i think that's it's good it's done i think it's, it's needed i think for yeah. the level of golf that you're playing at you, you can't know? be an athlete and not be competitive correct <laughs> um and what do you do you like basketball 
I you like to watch play? basketball. You ever play? Any good? Uh, I'm pretty bad at basketball. Can't dribble too well. <laughs> no, that's fu- I'm so bad actually. Oh my god, it's hilarious. Uh, we do a CYO. Yeah. Unfortunately, we didn't do it this year. Yeah. Couldn't be done. We, yeah, but um. I'm trying to think of other things you could do to uh, to flex that uh, competitive side of yours. I know. Which would allow it to bleed onto the golf course, you know, like playing pool. Yeah. Playing cards. Play ping pong. Playing ping pong. <laughs> Which there is actually it's some of the most intense moments ever. And like I get super trying to take that. it trying to take it seriously, you know? Yeah. And not uh just I mean obviously it's ping pong. But uh Yeah, exactly. That's like the kids like at modern day that like, were playing P E in like se- sixth, seventh, eighth grade and they're like, oh, I'm not gonna try I'm not gonna be a try hard. Oh, I hate and, like that. you're giving up on an opportunity to improve your um your your uh, competitive nature. Yeah. Shame on you. It's like a sin. God's not happy right now. You're not using your talents as you should use them. I mean, it goes directly to what you're saying. It's like the reason why you're that. You're, I think maybe golf took off like it did was because how competitive you were, not just in golf growing up, but in lacrosse and everything else that you engaged in, yeah. sport wise. Um, just allowed for golf to just take off like on fire, right? Yeah. And I was I was so used to winning in in other sports like yeah. lacrosse. I played on a good team. We won all the time. Mm-hmm. And then like hockey, we won a lot. Modern day sports, we always won because it's modern day. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And we uh, I think I got so used to winning that like anything other than winning felt weird. Yeah. But in golf, it's hard because most of the time you don't win. Yeah. Um, so it's hard to keep that mindset. Uh, of just trying to win every time. Yeah, what you, I mean, what you're doing is uh, is necessary, I think, for your future success. I you know? agree. Keep thinking, keep thinking, keep thinking. How do I <laughs> keep the edge? Got to keep the edge, keep the edge, keep the edge. You know. Yeah. And uh, you really need if you really need like a like a something to really boost your ego, you can come over here and you can, you can race me or something. <laughs> and like uh. Hundred yard dash if you probably spank me. I don't know. I haven't run. I haven't sprinted all out in a long time. <laughs> or you know what? You can golf against me. How about yeah. that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I give. I don't know. Arm wrestling edge yet? I don't know. No, you Maybe. can crush me. <laughs> but uh, I'll compete against you in anything you want. All right. You know, if you're looking for someone to talk to or play a game against, yeah, give me a call. You got my number now. Right. I think. Maybe it's over Instagram, but same difference. Yeah. But I think a, a good, if, if kids are listening to this right now, um, to realize that to play sports, all I think, how many, did you play a lot of sports growing up? I played a lot of sports. That's so important. Yeah. And to play and want to win and compete. Yep. And then one of those sports is going to speak to you, you know. And the playing of all the sports, hockey, I don't know about basketball, wrestling, <laughs> lacrosse, um, whatever it might be, ping pong, is going to, all the the, the, en- the energy and, and the, that you put into all those sports will come and pour itself into, if you find a sport that stand, stands out among the field and really help to uh, propel you in that one sport yeah. because you've played a lot of other sports. Because you were talking earlier about how come some people can't compete um, when the lights are on on the big stage, right? Um, and you said earlier, correct if I'm wrong, that, you know, it, that maybe, was maybe your athletic background, meaning the amount of uh, other sports you played. Yeah. That allowed you to develop and nurture a, a serious competitive fire. Yeah. I think all sports, they all have common aspects to them. Yeah. Where no matter what you do, those aspects will carry on to whatever other sport you do. Yeah. And I think doing more sports helps you unlock a bunch of different things that could end up helping you along down the road and whatever you do. Yeah. Like, I, I learned a lot from playing lacrosse. I learned a lot from playing hockey. Even though I only wrestled for a year, I learned so much from wrestling. Mm-hmm. Just about, like, discipline. And Maybe the most. Yeah. It's, just, it's so different. It's so different. And you only did it for such a short amount of time. Oh, the, you had to be learning every day a lot. 
the pressure of going into a match just like one on one. I mean, seriously, it's like it's in a one singlet. The, yeah, like, pretty much. You're like half naked. That's what I was, I was. I was. You feel like you're naked, and you're like in front of all <laughs> your friends, and in your mind, losing is the most embarrassing thing ever. Even though probably to them they're like, oh, okay, whatever. It's it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. But to you, in that moment, it's like. It is. Holy crap, like the if world. I lose this. You think the world's like going to collapse on yeah. you if you lose it. So that, Similar to golf. Yeah. Um, but it's not like a totally one-on-one unless you're playing match play. Right? Um, but it's like, it's a very, there's a lot of honesty in individual sports. Yeah. It's like, I messed up on the 10th hole, and if I didn't, I probably would have, you know, had a better score. Yeah. You're just looking at you. Yeah, there's no... You. There's no... There's, 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 there's great elements of team sport that you know about, like trust, you know, teamwork, and being patient and realizing that, re- realizing that life is not fair, and a lot of it's out of your hands. You might have the best game of your life playing lacrosse. <laughs> you might have, like, seven goals, but you might still lose the thing, and you got to be upset about that uh, because the rest of your team didn't play well. Yeah. But, no blame. And that's, I mean, that's, like, the person that, like, lives the perfect life and is virtuous and honest and works hard, and he gets hit by a bus at 40 years old. Life's not fair. Yeah. Um, but uh, there's some certainly uh, transparency, honesty about individual sports and golf. It's just like them talking about the man in the mirror. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's all on you. You know that song. Yeah. Michael Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> there's, I think it's, I think there's also a poem, right? I don't know the poem, not but recalling. I know the song. <laughs> I, bet, I bet dance floors know that, know that you know that song too, whether for a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> um, all right, we should probably wrap. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> thanks for hanging out, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. This you're, is super fun. Uh, a, you're uh, an impressive young man. Reminds me a lot of my, nah, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> when I was 18. 18? Yes. Yeah, all right, cool. And uh, you're going to do great things at, at Wake. And, you know, if not, give me a call and we'll, we'll make it work. Yeah. How about that? Sounds good. Sounds great. All right, brother. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Mar- uh, Marshall Meisel, ladies and gentlemen. Mm-hmm.